extra support for the SES. Across central Queensland, this is 7 News with Rob Brough and Joanne Desmond. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. Good evening. A 12-month economic recovery plan has been laid out for us in central Queensland as the state faces its biggest financial crisis since the Great Depression. This year's federal budget is about refuelling the economy by getting more locals into work. From agriculture to mining and construction, central Queensland is the region renowned for its strong industry. That is really important because, you know, we've got coal, we've got gas and this is about jobs. And now the federal government has pledged $98 billion to create more jobs. From today, employers will receive $200 a week for hiring under 30-year-olds and $100 for anyone aged between 30 and 35 for working 20 hours a week. It's a pro-business budget. It's got a, a number of components that we certainly support trying to get younger people back into work. Lower and middle income workers will also receive a tax cut this year backdated to July. July 1. That aims to encourage locals to spend. We would hope to see some of that flow through to the local economy. But the incumbent member for Keppel says she's disappointed the budget doesn't outline a clear plan for education and hospitals. I think it just goes to show that when it comes to health care and education, the LNP don't care and they'd rather be putting the, the money elsewhere. Capricornia's federal member is defending that claim. You just can't look at one figure in the budget. She says the budget will deliver record funding for health services and more higher education short courses will be available to upskill the region. Businesses will also receive a 50% wage subsidy to take on apprentices and trainees. The federal member says it's all about getting the region working again. Jobs, jobs, jobs. We want people back working in the workforce. Isla Stanich, 7 News. State Labor candidates have taken aim at the federal government for failing to allocate additional funds to improve the central Queensland stretch of the Bruce Highway. They're now calling the LNP's duplication project an impossible promise. Touching down in the beef capital, the incumbent Transport Minister arrived today to inspect the million dollar project supporting central Queensland's cattle industry. We are seeing billions flowing into regional Queensland and uh, I endorse that. That is a good thing. But the mighty Bruce was the focus following last night's federal budget. We've asked for uh, increased uh, funding for the Bruce High. We, did, we, we didn't get that. We've been lobbying the federal government for three years for another $133 million. The $2 billion federal road safety package supports joint projects already announced and costed, including the Rockhampton Ring Road. This is geared towards smaller projects between half a million and $5 million uh, from the federal government. The budget didn't include funding for new major projects and offered no support to increase the Bruce Highway to four lanes. But the federal member for Capricornia says that's a project her party supports. It's something that federally we've been pushing as well because it's really important for road safety. Queensland Labor believes it proves Deb Frecklington's election promise is just a pie in the sky. Deb Frecklington can repeat over and over a bold, uh, big and ambitious, but without funding it's just a load of bull. But Queensland's LNP leader says she isn't concerned, continuing to push her promise. It's only the LNP that have got a plan to build a four-lane Bruce Highway. Anna McGraw, 7 News. Two men have faced Rockhampton's Magistrates Court, charged with offences relating to firearms robberies at rural properties across the region. A 46-year-old Park Avenue man has been remanded in custody and had his case adjourned until November 18. A 30-year-old Kiwana man was released on bail but is due to appear back in court on October 28. A new report has revealed the developers of a resort on Great Keppel Island may not have the finances to complete the project. An independent assessment completed for the Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy in June stated Alton Property Group had net assets of $26.8 million. The report has estimated the total cost of building infrastructure on the island is almost $400 million. And we've said all along that we will consider transferring the leases to Altum only if they can demonstrate that financial capacity. To date, they haven't been able to do that. 
Alton Property says it will be able to secure support from investors once it receives confirmation the state government will financially support them. BHP has parted ways with the Queensland Resource Council after seeing red over an anti-Greens election campaign. The mining giant says it asked the industry body multiple times not to go ahead with an advertisement that recommends people vote Greens last. Keziah Dawn has the details. Rob, BHP has suspended its membership with the QRC effective immediately after a series of politically driven posts were shared on social media. The posts encouraged Queenslanders to vote Greens last in the state election. BHP says it has expressed to the QRC on several occasions its opposition to this advertising approach and had formally requested that it be withdrawn. Unfortunately, this has not occurred. Anglo-American South 32 and Rio Tinto have also expressed their dislike for the posts. South 32 said we value the work that the QRC does to support the Queensland resource industry and the broader community. However, we do not support campaigns directed at individuals or political parties. The Queensland Resources Council Board responded today with a statement saying it considered the issue of an anti-Greens campaign carefully before the board decided to proceed with the campaign. The QRC believes the Greens will target jobs in the sector and it had no choice but to stand up for its 372,000 members. But it has since removed the post. All right, thanks for that, Kaziah. The Red Cross is asking us to make a life-saving donation for International Plasma Awareness Week. Medical experts say plasma can often be the last line of defence for a range of illnesses because it's full of special proteins. 29,000 blood and plasma donations are needed every week across Australia. People can donate at their local lifeblood and blood donor centres. The family of a police officer who died by suicide is threatening court action if the police honour roll isn't changed. They've had support from the Queensland Ombudsman, but say they're being ignored by the government. Senior Sergeant Mick Isles left air for a training course in Townsville in September 2009. He never showed up and was never seen again. A coroner ruled it's likely he died by a self-inflicted gunshot wound but his service to the Queensland Police has never been acknowledged. I was met with crickets. In August, the Queensland Ombudsman recommended removing a clause in the role that prohibits the inclusion of officers who die by suicide. A petition was tabled in Parliament. And I think it's disappointing that the Minister has elected not to provide a response before government being dissolved. Now Stephen Isles is threatening to take the matter to the Supreme Court if changes aren't made immediately after the election. And I think it's high time that the Commissioner recognise that we shouldn't have to fight any longer. Families of officers who suicide say their inclusion on the role would acknowledge their community service and the mental struggles some face. In this day and age, it's, it's very important to bring uh, suicide out into the light, out of the darkness. The police minister's office has confirmed the commissioner is looking into the matter, but it's a decade too late for the Isles family. It's predictable because buck passing is what I've experienced for the last 11 years. Katie Tiney, 7 News. Suncorp has announced a partnership with Central Queensland State Emergency Service to help better protect residents from the risk of natural disasters. The multi-year deal will focus on educating locals and helping the SES fund rescue equipment. We work together. We work alongside each other through many, many events and we've done so for many years in Queensland and this just consolidates that relationship. Our SES members have welcomed the partnership ahead of what's expected to be a busy storm season for our region. We'll take a break in a moment. Why Bindi Irwin's name is a red flag for scammers. And the two new additions coming out of their shells at Rocky Zoo. Here, things aren't always as they seem. None of it fits. The Great British Mystery, new to 7-2. Maybe there were two killers. Here, it's her job to uncover the truth. You're the coroner. You have to help him. The coroner. Tonight on 7-2.
Backing in Ladbroke's greatest ever Cox Plate. Head to Ladbroke's for all the markets and watch the race on 7-2. Ladbroke's. Back yourself. Imagine if you had room to grow into a brighter future. Now, it's possible. Queensland Country Bank. Imagine more. Chicken breasts. So perfect. So versatile, they can do anything. Like this and that. Oh, look at them. Now only $7.99 per kilo. Aldi. Good. Different. Harvey Norman, your destination for internet safety. Our range from Trend Micro helps keep you safe in this connected world. Trend Micro Maximum Security protects your PC, Mac, mobile phones and tablets. Protect against malware, ransomware and identity theft. Secure online banking and shopping, now from just $24. Or secure your home network and smart devices with Trend Micro Home Network Security. Prevent hacking, phishing and viruses. Keep your kids safe online with parental controls. Just $128, now at Harvey Norman, your technology specialists. Go! Switch things up this Saturday at Caulfield, Randwick and Doombin on Races 1 to 4 and pick between double your winnings and bonus bets or bonus back if your runner finishes second or third. Ladbrokes, back yourself. Tom Cruise in the action blockbuster. Time we start running, start hunting. Jack Reacher, never go back tonight on 7. Central Queensland turns to 7 News to keep up to date on local issues and we want you to be a part of it. If there's something happening in your street, your suburb, we want to know about it. Send us a message or drop us an email. Thanks for joining us here on 7. Well, Bindi Irwin has had some big news this year with her recent wedding and pregnancy announcement. But looking up the wildlife warrior online could lead you down a very dark web path to cybercrime. New research shows that Bindi was one of the top five Aussie celebrities to generate risky search results when it comes to online crime. British singer Adele topped the list worldwide, with hackers taking advantage of her recent weight loss. Two new additions are coming out of their shells and getting to know their new home at Rockhampton Zoo. They're Creft River Turtles, and Council wants you to help name them. Rocky Zoo is celebrating the latest additions to its animal family. And we have two Crefts River turtles um, that have joined our zoo family. The turtles were rescued after being kept illegally and now zookeepers are nursing them back to health. And some of them have a couple of injuries that mean they're not necessarily fit for release um, and we don't want to introduce diseases and anything into the environment. The animals were quarantined for two weeks before being settled into their new enclosure, which simulates their natural habitat. It's a really nice natural environment that they have um, to be able to live in now. It's the first time Rockhampton Zoo has become home to a native species of turtle. You would see them down at the lagoon, but they're also found throughout quite a few riverways throughout Queensland. They are Australian native and this is the native section of the zoo, so it, um, it's really good for people to be able to see um, those animals on display. And now council needs the community's help to give them some turtly awesome names. Our keepers have got together and they've put some names uh, down and the community can have a look through them and have a vote for which, um, which names they would like. Head to the Rockhampton Zoo's Facebook page to cast your vote. Anna McGraw, 7 News. Well, for many Queenslanders, a cold beer is the perfect way to celebrate. So Great Northern has raised a glass of its own to mark 10 years in business and selling more than 100 million cartons of beer. It's a milestone worth celebrating. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Ten years ago this week, Great Northern Beer had humble beginnings in a Cairns pub. This is where we poured the very first Great Northern in October 2010. And it's gone from strength to strength. Back then we had an ambition, ambitious target of 20,000 cases. Ten years on, we've now sold over 108 million cases nationally. Drinkers have taken up the Sunshine State brew not just at home but across the country. We launched first here in Queensland because we knew it would be successful here. We had people coming up from New South Wales, Victoria on holidays and when they were heading back to their own states they were smuggling cartons of Great Northern back and that just created the demand down south. I do move around Australia a lot and the one thing I do notice is that uh, everyone is cracking open a Great Northern and it's, it's great to see. 
and there are grand plans for the drink of choice well beyond 2020. Hopefully uh, 200 million cases in the next 10 years. Quenching the thirst of Australians for years to come. It just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger and I can't see it, you know, stopping. Matthew Carstunen, 7 News. Time to get into the SWAT out, I think Queensland has selected its first group of players for State of Origin, mate. Yeah, that's right, Brophy. Look, 15 of the 27-man squad was revealed this afternoon and there's already a few CQ products in there. We'll have more on that next. And the raging under-12 CQ Bulls go all the way at the Touch Footy National Youth Championships. There's more to me than just silly, funny comedian. Are you OK? Yes, stop! I would never, ever have put you as a comedian. That doesn't say a lot about my comedy then, does it? Oh! SAS Australia starts Monday, October 19 on 7. Closing borders was a big step, but my first job has to be to protect Queensland lives. Now our economic plan is helping protect Queensland jobs because part of my job is also to protect yours. Authorised Jay Campbell, Australian Labor Party, State of Queensland, Brisbane. Introducing Macca's biggest and best ever loose change menu with more of your favourites. And for a limited time, you can grab a Happy Meal for just $4. A little goes a long way at Macca's. When life hands you lemons, hand them back and demand mangoes. Sweet. Juicy. Mangoes. 100% Aussie Kensington Pride Mangoes now available. Aldi. Good. Different. Harvey Norman, your specialists in wine care. Our wine cabinets are available in a complete range of sizes, shapes and styles to fit any home and budget. We have everything you need to protect the integrity of your wine, featuring the latest technology from the leading brands, so you can enjoy your wine at its absolute best. Plus, buy on 60 months interest-free and receive a bonus gift card up to $500 at Harvey Norman Now, your specialists in wine care. Most people think all shampoos are the same at dandruff removal. But Head & Shoulders not only gets rid of dandruff, it also cleanses, protects and moisturises your scalp for up to 100% dandruff protection. I recommend Head & Shoulders. Do you have a deck like this? Think of the maintenance and this old tired look? Check this out. This is Patio World's famous aluminium decking. Looks amazing. Discover the amazing benefits and uses of aluminium decking. Patio World, we'll show you how. It's back! Hogs Breath Steak and Scallop Special. Aussie Fraser Coast Scallops paired with premium Australian rib steak. Simply mouthwatering. Head to your local Aussie owned hogs for the sensational seafood spectacular. Limited time only. At Coles, you can lower the cost of your weekly shop with thousands of specials across the store this week. Like Lynx Body Spray and Deodorant and Nature's Way Vitamin C Adult Fighter Gummies, now half price. Coles, value the Australian way. How far would you go to save your son? My son's gonna live! Denzel Washington is John Q, Friday on 7. Welcome back to 7 News. Harry Grant's already impressive NRL season just got even better. The Yapoon Seagulls Jr. has been named in Queensland squad for this year's historic State of Origin series. He joins fellow CQ product Ben Hunt in their 15-man preliminary squad, which is made up of players whose teams are no longer in the NRL Premiership race. For the first time in five years, though, CQ's Corey Oates has been overlooked for selection after missing six games for the Broncos this season. Cameron Munster and Christian Welch are set to come into the squad after the Melbourne Storms campaign ends. Players will be added following NRL finals matches with Game 1 at Adelaide Oval on Wednesday, November 4. Rockhampton's Jess Jonathan and the Aussie women's cricket team made history this afternoon, becoming the second side to win 21 consecutive international one-dayers. In their final match of the Rose Bowl against New Zealand, Alyssa Healy and Rachel Haynes were nothing but class as they steered the hosts to a 325-run total. Australia went on to win by 232 runs, their biggest to date against New Zealand. CQ's touch football scene isn't showing any signs of slowing down, with seven of their eight teams making it through to the grand finals at the recent National Youth Championships. The under-12 girls were the standouts. They didn't drop a single game as they went on to win their division. 
an appropriate prize at the end of an unpredictable six months. It's needless to say these pint-sized powerhouses won't be forgetting their achievement any time soon. You can tell that the other regions have had other tournaments, um, but, yeah, our girls just stuck to our structure and yeah, came home strong. They only had a few weeks of preparation before the championships on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, we usually train the, like every Saturday and Friday afternoons um, and we worked on all moves that we were going to do. The junior bulls breezed their way through to the finals with their only hiccup being a draw against North Queensland. The first game we actually drew zero all with them so it was a really tough game and they played really well. Even though we did win we could have made, we could have improved things but we all helped each other out and encouraged each other to play our best. They met again in the big decider and NQ didn't have it their way the second time around. We thought we were going to lose but we came back with our confidence and we did really well. CQ had eight teams go through to the semis with seven making it to the final in their division. And, and that's a big thing on our coaches. Um, Blakey Moore, Damo Moore, uh, Mitchie Smith, um, like they've all come through our process. Connor Rose, Seven News. After a few weeks of track preparation, Callaghan Park is looking in great order for tomorrow's thoroughbred meeting and Russell Leonard's there to help us pick some winners early on in the card. That's right, Nathan. Racing returns to the headquarters here at Callaghan Park tomorrow. We haven't raced here for a month. We've got seven races set down for decision. The track looks in great order after some remedial work. We kick things off at 1.47. I think there's two good things on the program, so let's profile my best bets for tomorrow's card. Early mail specials and we kick up in the open. A hero like Tia B number 10 and Zumarada. Well, he comes off a last start second at Keppel Park, Yapoon. I do think he'll go one better tomorrow. And Ryan Wiggins does the steering for the Stuart Kendrick guard with Zumarada. Then to race two, hero like the toppy Chin Chin Billa. He's had the two runs back from a break to prep up for this. This looks right for the picking. I do think he'll be winning. And Dakota Graham does the riding here for the Bevan Johnson stable with Chin Chin Billa. Well, there you go, punters. My good thing, Sir Rocky Zumarada and Chin Chin Billa will get the money nice and early in the program. And if having a bet, do so responsibly. Good luck, good punning, and we'll catch you at the races tomorrow. Lovely stuff. Thank you, as always, mm. Matt Russell. And that's it for sport tonight. Thanks, guys. Yeah, nice. All right, we'll stay with us after the break. Livio joins us with all the weather details. It's Mad Cop. Oh, what are those? These are my spanks. They hold everything together. Why? What's going to come popping out? The Heat, Thursday. It's our big 14th birthday bash, and everyday Aussies are getting our greatest deals yet. Like Simon's Towel, Stevie's Kicks, Ned's Telly, and Mick's Joggers. For big 14th birthday bargains, everyday Aussies, check out Catch. It's back. Hogs Breath Steak and Scallop Special. Aussie Fraser Coast Scallops paired with premium Australian rib steak. Simply mouthwatering. Head to your local Aussie owned hogs for the sensational seafood spectacular. Limited time only. Drive and take away my worries of today. And leave tomorrow. Take Ned's Caulfield Guineas Day to the Ned's level. Back a horse in any race at Caulfield this Saturday and ever run second or third, get up to $50 back in bonus bets. Take it to the Ned's level. Get comfy with OMF 6050 sale with up to 60% off selected Australian made quality mattresses. Plus, keep your cash with up to 50 months interest free. And soon at Finder's best rated mattress brand, OMF. Get your Woolies worth with great weekly specials like chicken sandwich schnitzel from the deli, now just $1.10 each. That's half price. That's why I pick Woolies. Through every adversity. The stage is now a 
disaster zone. Through every rebuild. Through every recovery. We've been there. With you through every storm. That's the Suncorp spirit. Working from anywhere. The Aussie success stories of dumping the office. The tips and tricks to make it work for you on Sunrise tomorrow. Hi folks, Livio Regano with tonight's weather. Spring always tends to be quiet in Queensland, but with the onset of La Nina, I'd have expected at least something to talk about by now. The best we can hope for is a storm in the south on Friday, Saturday, and a light shower in the wet tropics. 29 degrees the top today at Rockhampton Airport, more or less what you'd expect in the first week of October. Heading east, Yapoon got to 24 and Gladstone 27 degrees. Let's look at the satellite loop now. Quite a lot of cloud uh, along the eastern seaboard of Queensland, even more so out to sea, but it's being capped by an inversion, which means it can't uh, develop high enough into the atmosphere to start producing showers, and there's been very, very little rain east of the ranges. By contrast, of course, there's a big cloud band across western Queensland, and it has started raining in the southwest, though not as heavy as we'd hoped. Let's have a look at today's chart now. The inland trough associated with the cloud band, you can see right there. And there it is um, from the Gulf of Carpentaria all the way down into southwest Queensland. Meanwhile, of course, the weakening high in the Tasman Sea is being replaced by another one coming under Tasmania, maintaining a, a ridge of light easterly winds along the coast. On tomorrow's chart, the inland trough finally starts to get mobile, moves into central Queensland. Could be just far enough to kick off a storm on the Western Downs, but otherwise a dry day across Queensland. And on the Outlook chart, it finally moves into southeast Queensland. Might be a storm in the southeast, and that'll continue into the weekend as the trough starts progressing again. Now, the latest from the Weather Bureau. The boating forecast for Capricorn, what is east to northeast winds? Just 10 to 15 knots tomorrow, but on that persistent 2 metre easterly swell. Friday's winds, northeast 10 to 15, pretty much the same again for Saturday. Tides are starting to go up and down more slowly with Saturday's half moon fast approaching. Tomorrow's high tides due about lunchtime on the beach and it's not that big. The Capricornia district forecast, a fine and sunny day. No uh, rain this time with Gladstone reaching 27 degrees. 30 for Rockhampton, Biloela 33, Yapoon 26 with the sea breeze. Central Highlands and Coalfield, some early fog clearing to a mostly sunny day with 33 degrees atop at Emerald, Claremont and Moranbar. Looking ahead for Rockhampton, Friday, Saturday, we'll see our temperatures peak as the wind backs around from the north. The chance of any rain in the next week is too slim to be worthy of mention. Don't forget, folks, if you're new to Seven Local Weather and would like to learn more about meteorology and the charts up on your screen, I try once a week to spend some extra time explaining a new concept so you can build up a knowledge base over time. Have a wonderful evening, and now it's back to the team. Cliff, thank you very much, mate, and thanks for your company. I'll see you tomorrow night. Just a reminder, you can watch a replay of our news on 7 Plus. And from all of us, good night. Good night.